All right. Shall I end, everyone? Thank you for joining. Thank Shall I end, everybody? Got Joe on the phone. We're going to read some scriptures. Yes, sir. Are, are you ready out there, peoples? Yes, ma'am. We're going to get into Deuteronomy 32 real quick. We're going to pick up from 12. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. I'm talking about Jacob. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him suck honey out of the rock and oil you out of the flinty rock, but of kind and milk of sheep with fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat and thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape but just run wax fat and kicked thou art waxen fat thou art grown thick thou art covered with fatness then he forsook the most high of which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations, provoke they him to anger. They sacrifice unto devils and not the most high, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom whom your fathers feared not, of the rock that began to be, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten the most high. And so it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very forward uh, generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not a God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For a fire is kindled in my anger, and shall burn into the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap mischief upon them. I will send mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. The sword without the terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin the suckling also with the man of gray hairs i said i would scatter them into corners i would make the rem remembrance of them to cease from among men were it were it not that i feared the wrath of the enemy least their adversaries should behave mm -hmm. themselves strangely and least they should say our hand is high and the most high have not done all this for the nation for they are a nation void of counsel neither is there any understanding in them oh that they were wise that they understood this that they would consider their latter end how should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight except their rock had hope had sold them and the most high had shut them up for their rock is not our rock even our enemies themselves being judges you read that one again for their rock is not our rock jeepers <laughs> their rock is jeepers our rock is the most high it's, 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 no confusion in there we go up one, it says, what? 
that they have no understanding. The Most High constantly says there is no other God. There is no body beside me. Everything that comes out of their mouth, a nation void of counsel. Jesus is at the right side of God. God says, worship me, not my creation. If Jesus was even God's son, that would be a creation. Does anybody even realize that? They are void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding. This is early in this book. This is five books in. I know these are books within books. Doll within a doll. Five books in, it tells you what they worship is not what you should be worshiping. He tells you right away they are worshiping devils. They are worshiping devils. Can you turn the book of Daniel real quick? It also tell you that in Deuteronomy 4 and 19. Say Daniel? Yeah. All right, here in 9 and 25, we see that we have a Messiah, the Prince. But the temple is destroyed for a period of time that, for most part, a lot of us don't understand. But right here, it tells us very, very clearly in 9 and 26 who these people are, a people that are not, who has a separate rock from us, whose rock sold them. That's what we just read. Their rock sold them. Go ahead. Joe? Yeah, I'm here. Go ahead. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince shall come, shall destroy the city in the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood and until the end of the war desolations are determined and it tells us right there the, and the people of the prince now well, we've asked who this prince is many times many times and it's very easy to understand who their prince is their prince is their rock and we're told about this character Hold on one second. Go ahead. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It serve up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. They have raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. So, they, one second. So this prince, <coughs> I want you to think about how hierarchy goes. You have a king, and then you have the prince, and under that is the nobles and then the people. This wickedness that goes forth, it does not follow that hierarchy. The prince is higher than the king. And it's very easy to see this. Go ahead, continue, please. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pump is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vows, the worm is spread up, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, which did is weaken the nations? Now, I have uh, someone in the comments, and they were they wanted their opinion to be heard. And again, these are pre-recorded videos, so the idea that 
even if I was doing a live video, I'm not here to answer questions. And the title doesn't say question and answer, call in, or anything like that. So this person gets on the phone with me after I've blocked him the day before, and he's angry, but he doesn't want to say that. So he says, uh, well, Jesus is Apollo. This is what he says to me. Now, he says, Jesus is Apollyon, not the son of Apollyon. Revelation 12, 11, And they had a king over them, which was the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue is Apollo. Now, this is what I have to say to this. There's scripture that clears this up. It, it truly does. First off, before we go to the scripture, we already know, that this has to do with Venus, which in Hebrew is Shahar. Okay? That's the morning star. So, she having a twin brother who is Apollo. So, Apollo didn't sleep with his sister and then she bore Apollo. Apollo slept with his sister, and then she had a child whose name is not Apollo. So, these comments, because you got blocked about a different subject, is ridiculous. They call me on the phone and say, I don't like you lying to my people. And first off, you came by my campfire to warm your hands. Your hands got warm, and then you tried to use your hands on me. Understand, when you come to somebody's campfire to get warm, your duty is to go out with those warm hands. N not use the warm hands on or, or on the hand that fed you. This seems utterly ridiculous. And here's why. They say right here, son, Ben, Bane. That's that's not no we're twins, and I knocked you up, and you're breeding me. No, they had a child, and the child's name is Helel. That's why they say Helel Yulia. Please, if I say I got some rules, if you want to get in my pants, don't think you're not going to follow those rules to get where I'm at. Just like your girlfriend's rules, your mama's rules, your daddy's rules, or I don't know, your, your best friend's rules, the rules at the facility that you go to all day, and you don't want to follow rules. You know, you're not active in society. If you're not active in society, you know you're not, you don't have no business here. This, this makes Utterly no sense. They say here, son of the morning. He holds the key to his daddy's prison cell. He holds the key to his daddy's kingdom. They say right here that the kings of the earth, the chief ones, if Apollo is the chief down there, then it says even his dad raises up to greet him. Like I leave in all these comments. Learn how to read. If you come over here, get fired up, pointing that right back at me, it's not going to do you any good. You're viewing somebody's channel. If you, if I get in an argument with anybody that's a YouTube author, no matter what I say personally, at the end, they get to upload whatever the fuck they want. If they say, I did this to him and I did that to him, all I can do is type some comments or make a video. Whoever saw that, they saw that. And it, it's, it's what it is. But this is a book that everybody has, and everybody can see this for their own. He is greeted by the kings of the earth. Everybody can see this on their own. He is the son of the morning star. Everybody can turn to like Revelation 22, where he says he is. The morning star. That means he usurped his mama. 
And what the most high say, when I'm done with all this, I will give you the morning star. What does that mean? I want you to sit here. Can you think about how everything's created? Everything's created through fucking. What does the stem of a plant look like? A penis. What does the head of the flower look like? Hmm? Oh, oh, how's the flower open up? Mm -hmm. Get the fuck out of here. I will give you that bitch. On a chain. And what else could he be saying? Hmm? Uh, everybody else. Uh, I'm doing this for the most high. Uh, I put uh, them in th their hands and they can do with them what they will. Ain't that how it's always written? So when he say, I will give you the morning star, he's in, you know, the following, you can do with her what you will. That's the queen of heaven being given away as a trophy. Which one of you are going to earn it? Hmm? Which one of you are going to bring this book to life? These prophecies in the latter days is written about people. Uh, the book of Jubilees, uh, there will be those who will follow the moon. For, for for the beginning of the year and it will throw all their mm, those people are written about one will chase a thousand only story you've ever heard of is samson what about last generation what about this generation who is going to step forth and fulfill their destiny that's the real question you hear these people, they have to manifest their destiny. That's called Plato. No. You have a choice. As you've always had a choice. You have food, laws, sacrifices. Hey, might as well. Hey, one more. You feel like turning to Ecclesiastics real quick? All right. Chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. All right. We should all understand this. Since we all talk all this, I love God, God loves me. Whenever you're ready. For well, all this I considered in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of the Most High. No man know either love or hatred by all that is before them. Hold on real quick. You see that? That the righteousness and the wise and their what? Works. You, you got to be active. You got to be active. Go ahead, brother. And things come, and things come alike to all. There is no event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean, and to the unclean, to him that sacrifices and to him that sacrifices not, as is the good to the sinner, and he that sweareth as he that feareth an oath. There is. Only one event, Judgment Day, and to the righteous, go this, and to the wicked, go this, and to him that sacrifices, and to him that does not sacrifice. Don't you understand what's going on? If Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob sacrificed, But you say, not for me. Did the Christian sacrifice to the Most High? Did the did did the did the Indians with all their 
stuff sacrificed to the most high. Did the Hindu Indians with all their shit sacrifice all their different cosmetology worship and all that? Did they sacrifice to the most high? You see how if you go back to the first book, you got Enoch sacrificing to the most high and then teaching his family. So his family is sacrificing up uh, 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 to the most high all the way up until Noah. And then there's a covenant. Enoch, Enoch don't even get a covenant. Enoch did things so good. He just said, hey, come on up here. Lead my children, the real, the angels, his real sons. People, you got it all wrong. As I say this, and you say, you just, well, uh, 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 stiff neck. I, I'm not, hey, this is a competition among the Israelites. What position will you take? We know where Ezekiel's position is going to be. We know where Isaiah's position is going to be. Are you going to be under them, or is you just going to be not with them at all? All these people sacrificed to the Most High. And very few Gentiles. But Gentiles have. And on Judgment Day, he gonna say, "Those that sacrifice me, uh, sacrifice to me, right? You're, you're on this side. Those that didn't sacrifice, you're on this side. The whole job of man, the whole duty of man, is to worship the Most High, not have." fresh hair, not to be an athlete, not to be an astronaut, not to be an aerospace engineer, not to be a chemist, not to be a mathematician. It's just to bow your ass down and worship the Most High. Now, every year of your life, you know, showed you people exhilarate themselves through pride and you know, watch their demise. And yet, you, you, you never stop to consider how many people died without worshiping the Most High. All right, and real quick, next, I wanted to uh, highlight this for the people, Deuteronomy 4. I'm going to pick it from 15. Um, take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Most High spake unto you in horror out of the midst of the fire. Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you in graven image the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the water beneath the earth. And least thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven, should it be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Most High thy Creator hath to divided unto all the nations under the whole earth. But the Most High have taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance, as ye are this day. I mean, that's very clear. This is even more clear than the Ten Commandments. No graven image of any type of figure. Period. Not male, not female. Everybody knows they worship some dude nailed to a cross, meaning death. I mean, how fucking stupid are people? The Most High is the God of life, and these people are worshiping a guy that died for their sins, which is a mockery of the law. No man can die for anybody else's sins. See? And he said, no type of beast. So he said, no images of men, no images of women, no images of beasts, right? 
No images of winged birds like the eagle. Right? I worship money. There's a fucking eagle all over money. All over money. Eagles. Hmm? Uh, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground. Can't even use grasshopper symbols, man. Can't worship that shit. This is about what? Worship. What is a graven image? An idol. What are these idols that are talking about to carve? Why are you be carving this? The bow. People, you gotta wake up. Well, I, I got this symbol of Jesus. I, I, I like it. I don't worship it. Get your your twisting thing. Don't make yourself sick. They divided everything. It's a math equation. The sun is in a position that everybody can share. If the moon's in a position that travels through, that everybody can see. It's it. The stars rotate through, throughout like a clock, so everybody can see each of it. It's just a trip. This is a trip. It's all divided. It's a math equation. Fair use. And we're going to take use. a look at this video. Orphan trains replenishing America's workforce. And this is focusing on Seneca Village in New York and the Croton Aqueduct that was built. The video is about nine months ago, and you know we're gonna we're gonna roll through it. If a commercial plays, I'm just gonna play it. I'm not going through the hassle. Howdy, y'all. Welcome back. In the mid 19th century, we see many depictions of American cities with extremely beautiful and picturesque architecture. Some would call the architecture old world, reminiscent of the classic buildings that are found throughout Europe. Indeed, we have a cornucopia of architects imported to America from a wide variety of European countries at this time. These men envisioned an America with a flair for their specific European heritage. And thus, we are told that the major cities began to rise like hotcakes all around the country. As we dive into the photography from the 19th century and into the turn of the century, into the early 1900s, we have a few things that become abundantly clear. Today, I'd like to tie together the often misconstrued atmosphere of the mid-1800s in America, supplying you with ample information taken directly from the currently accepted resources to provide you with a definitive look at one of the strangest and seldom discussed events of the mid-1800s. That is, the orphan trains. Many photographs of America from the 19th century show a landscape that is already shaped Cities that are formed, we're told, by the ingenuity of early European settlers. What we see in the photographs many times, however, is empty cities. We also see cities that are built with architecture that appears to exceed the means of the people that are constructing the cities. In short periods of time, usually less than a 100 years, a city in America will go from what we're told was indigenous earthworks and mounds into a well-thought-out masonry and brick masterpiece. What's not often cited in these sources is, many times, the Native American earthworks were actually incorporated into the cities, into the bases of the structures, into the parks, and into the way that the streets were formed. Furthermore, many indigenous groups built using bricks and stone, making it easier for the European settlers to dismantle their work, reuse the bricks and stone, or even claim the indigenous structures as their own. As we dive into the empty cities further, we must also remember that slave labor was often used for the construction of these major cities. This is key as we begin to break down what really happened in America in the mid-1800s. Now, as many of these cities in the photographs appear empty or barren or the streets often mud-covered, and while the masonry buildings appear much older than they should be for the photographs, we must begin to question the harsh conditions of the mid-1800s. Could weather events really have caused these buildings to appear so aged? It brings me back to the European architects said to have constructed these massive feats of engineering. Did they really build these structures and then basically leave them be? Meaning the cities that they were built in were then in charge of the upkeep. And essentially, most of these cities appeared to just let the buildings weather over time. That's what we see in the photographs 
from the mid to late 1800s, before times appear to change by the early 1900s, when the same architecture, the same structures, and Fair the streets use. around them appear much more serviceable. Again, the question becomes, where are the people? And the answer may be more shocking than you expect. The architecture aside, we're told that a disproportionate amount of people were locked away in mental asylums in the mid-1800s in America. Another key component to understanding... Okay, so I guess we're going to start right here. Um, okay, so again, a lot of these uh, images are pretty interesting. Um, when you look at these buildings, you can see they're built up to a degree that from what we've heard over time, you know, people couldn't do this. Um, now, if we took into consideration that in the past you had, let's look at this uh, Tower of Babylon, excuse me, not the Tower, the Statue of Ibu Chad Nazir, it says this empire ruled, and then they show us these images of what this Im this empire is supposed to look like. And again, when we live in these uh, box type houses, and we see like you know the Roman pillars, the, the 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 grand auditorium of each building, and then it's got rooms. Uh, you would think that uh, over time the construction would get greater and greater and greater and greater, like a balloon, right? But instead, what we have is a cutoff in period in time, a cutoff period in time where no more of these buildings are built, and it's as if building starts all from scratch, no knowledge of how to to mix and pour stuff. Now, why do I say this? Well, we have seen these people build shack after shack after shack. How come when they crossed the desert in 1850, how come they weren't making brick buildings? Why were they just building shacks? If the brick was that easy to make and all you had to do was to have some lumber to have a fire and you built a kiln and all that shit or an oven, why weren't, when they crossed out west, why weren't they just making bricks? Why did they just keep making wooden buildings and wooden sheds? You know, this becomes the question because looking at images like this, we know that these people do not have the ability to build. When you're making buildings like this, it means you have to have types of construction. When these people get a hammer, uh, 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 they were building wagons. When they got a saw, they were building wagons. They built shacks and sheds. To go back to the, uh, the statement, Jared, that he said in a couple minutes ago in the video, uh, <clears throat> the indigenous people would use bricks to build things. So he, he, he gently went and said that. And that's, it's just something that's going to happen over and over again. Everything will be said real gentle, which I don't think the truth is, 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 is gentle. We are always told the truth hurts. So we're going to see a lot of conflict with, with the ideas because again, the, he's, he's, he, as Joe said, he said they dismantled to you to reuse brick as if they didn't know how to make brick. So the idea that these things are always being named Tartarian is a complete lie. Anything you want to add? No, not right now. Fair use. Yes, sir. Let's get going with this. America in the 1800s is to understand just how many asylums were being built. Not just a small building, a little retreat, or a doctor's office, but we're discussing over 500 massive, 
castle-like structures, usually built in a Kirkbride plan in large forested areas away from the public. These buildings employed the finest of European architectural designs, and most of these asylums, almshouses, and sanitation centers were later converted into prisons or torn down entirely. Okay, so we just heard they didn't have the ability to build these things. So what are we actually looking at? It looks like we're looking at someone altering the blueprint or just creating a blueprint of the layout and then calling it insane asylum, right? Michigan ins Asylum for the Insane Kalamazoo. So again, where does this name Kalamazoo come from? <laughs> Who named them? There's, there's a lot of questions that come up with this because again, they don't seem to have these uh, abilities, so to speak. But why were all of these asylums being built, especially in the Northeast? When we look at photographs of the large empty cities, sometimes we see a disproportionate number of children in the streets. Often, we're told that the photographs would be taken first thing in the morning when the streets were nearly empty. Yet, we often see these large packs of children seemingly roaming the streets unattended. How does this tie into the overarching narrative? Well, by the 1840s, large portions of the northern states had freed their enslaved people. This is a claim that we often see cited in many history books. What we don't see mentioned in the history books is, many times, the freed people were almost instantaneously locked away in asylums and sanitation centers. Hence, why we have so many of the large asylums being created in the early to mid 1800s. Think of the saying, seeking asylum. It wasn't just African Americans who faced these hardships. We also have countless indigenous people facing the same fate, as well as anyone really perceived by the larger society to be different. We're told, according to the official. Okay, so I wanna acknowledge something right here. Listen again. We also have countless indigenous people facing being created in the early to mid 1800s. Think of the saying, seeking asylum. It wasn't just African Americans who faced these hardships. We also have countless indigenous people facing the same fate. Okay, so I want you to kind of take note of this because we're going to watch other videos over time by this character and i want you to see him play these word games with our people because he already know the truth okay so so you know what i want to do something a little bit different a little bit different you want to add anything real quick it's just, yeah, it's, it's funny to understand that we the indigenous people, but to say, to keep stating African-American. Um, if we could, man, I want to go down to, uh, this, uh, give me a second, the, the time went off the screen, um, Got a couple of commercials playing real quick. All right, um, we'll do something a little bit different. Let's go further into the video first. I want to show you something. And uh, we're at five minutes right now on the audio, but I think we should come up here to 23. And uh, you want to say something? It's 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 just it's. It's appalling. Investment. The pair of themselves, Erica, ready for adoption. Then we have sanitation fairs put in place to teach the country, mostly in the West, to take care of themselves. But more so, if you read between the lines, these fairs were to teach the new parents how to take care of their new investment.
So he said, if you read between the lines, right? And this is what he's going to do now. The orphan children. Now he's going to play some music and show some pictures. Okay. Now, he is telling you, I'm not going to tell you why the orphan children are here. You should read between the lines. Let's go back a little bit. 20 to 28. And then we'll be right back at the five minutes. League schools. The end result? That's for you to decide. See, there we it is right there. Whoa, articles. there it is. Okay. The end result, that's for you to decide. That's that's the part I wanted to catch. I I, I remember that part. So let's not, let's, not out of context. Let's try to get it there. And, uh, appears to have arose on a whim. What we appear to have is a long, calculated process enacted by members of Yale and other Ivy League schools. The end result, that's for you to decide. We have countless... The end result is not for anybody to decide. It's on screen. And I'll show you. Now, he's going to ramble a little bit, but basically he's saying, I'm not going to tell you why we were brought here. But it's going to be on screen. Hold on. Articles about these trains full of children being sent all around America, ready for adoption. Then we have sanitation fairs put in place to teach the country mostly in the west to take care of themselves but more so if you read between the lines these fairs were to teach the new parents how to take care of their new investment the orphan children now watch Now, he's a very interesting editor. You pay attention. He's showing you everything, huh? For a reason. And here is the answer to Tartaria. The Orphan Trains of Cape May. Now, you want to feel like reading? Yeah, I got it. <clears throat> the Orphan Trains of Cape May gained their notoriety in the Victorian era from 1837 to 1901. In addition to African-American slaves, Cape May also imported a large number of child slaves known as the children of the orphan train what do you, what did that say children uh child slaves Im known as the orphan train imported a large number of child slaves wow america <laughs> let's get let's keep going with it <laughs> whoa from 1850 to 1930 at least 200,000 children were placed out in a system of white slavery known as orphan trains what is white slavery you see that what the he talking about in this whole video when these children were brought here as slaves they weren't orphans he got the gold right here he refusing to read it because what the feelings the truth hurts 
When truth doesn't feel good, truth doesn't make you you're fucking happy. Hundreds of thousands of children was placed in a system of white slavery, publicly known as orphan trains. Go ahead, man. Most of the children came from the New York area. Many children found themselves orphans due to the rapid influx of immigrants into the into New York City. After the end of the Civil War and the emancipation of slavery in 1865, Cape May replaced the African American slaves with orphan trained slaves. I should say uh, indentured servants were orphan slaves. Mm-hmm. Indentured servants being right, the black people from Germany, the black Europeans being their servitude ending in the indentured, so the agreement, the contract ending because why they want to get out of the contract, huh? Not the people that bear their the owners, they don't want contracts. We have to give people money, give people land. Here, you just have straight up child slaves, don't even understand the idea law. Welcome, right? And they're saying that what? In these articles, they're saying, uh, we dearly respect that you'll treat these children like, like your family, like fam like members of your family. Hmm? They didn't do that. You don't beat and whip and torture indentured servant. They have every right to say the fucking contract ends. Go before a judge. This is who they did that shit to. Now, these people that grew up, got into positions and start crayon drawing, and then they draw us in their position. Here sitteth in my hand, come and take it from me, Frederick Bancroft, historian. A white dude telling you about slavery. Apprenticeships. You ain't never heard of no damn apprenticeship during slavery. Tell me, tell me the apprenticeship Patsy fucking Klein had. Her ass is out there picking fucking cotton. Picking motherfucking cotton, singing to the whole fucking town. Why? Because they had the whole town enslaved. And they try to alter the Patsy Klein story. Because she she made a great success of herself. Good for her. Good for anybody that makes a success when, when you know uh, that the word immigrant is false. It's a, it's a right? Sla white slavery known as orphan trains. Uh, what, what does all this have to do? All imported people. 13 point, does 13.8 fucking million uh, 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 slaves make sense now? See, the other day we were watching this shit and there's 13.8 million white people coming to New York and it's, right? And we're just thinking, they're just, they're just immigrants. They're just dropping them off in our land, right? Oh, well, it's different when you sit there and realize 13.8 fucking captives have just been brought to America to be what? Slaves. And in our generation, they're rewriting it. And saying these people were, no, oh, no, oh, there's just immigrants. When the fuck does it? Who, who the fuck says you got to go to Ellis Island to be de liced, de this, de that? Suddenly, Starts to all make sense. Now we can see what's really happening. Their rock sold them. They don't want to admit. 
Because what? We already said there's no understanding in them. None. That's why they're making all these videos saying shit about the Bible that it actually does not say in the Bible. They're actually saying the exact opposite of what it says in the Bible. A nation without counsel. Everybody's been watching for a while, y'all. Know this dude, Deuteronomy 32, one of my favorites, favorites, favorite, favorite chapters. You need to do Deuteronomy 28. You, you, you don't even understand Deuteronomy 32. Go ahead, finish this out, please. All right. Many of the Cape May orphan trains were part of the Cape May special hospital trains um, used to traffic the sick into asylums. The Victorian era saw a rapid expansion of Cape May as the nation's premier seaside resort, a resource of labor used to support the Cape May expansion came from the orphan train, child slave traffic. There's nothing but a resource. Yeah, you little ass children can't lift logs. What did the, the fuck, what, was it Benjamin Franklin get caught saying, we here to tear, we here to tear down the decided earth and make it look like a mirror. That's what, yeah, that's, oh, yeah, on yeah. the declaration for mankind. Right? He was making the declaration for mankind. He's he was seeing all of these swarthy men across the earth. So he had to make a petition for mankind. Simplified. Everybody. What's, what's, your, what's, your, what's your YouTube call again? Uh, simplifying scripture statement. There it is. There it is. Right? Where is it at? You lost me. But uh, it said that they were, uh, they're, 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 they're a, so a resource for labor, a labor resource. Yeah. Right? Back over. Now. Now that we've reached this as a climax, instead of, you know, where it should be, now let's go back and let's listen to him, how he's presenting this stuff. Now that we know that, now imagine how many of these YouTubers that covered this subject, you don't think they all saw the same shit? You think I'm sitting here reading this shit? It's straight out say white slavery. Now, how many YouTubers are white and cover orphan trains but never say white slavery? Here's a YouTuber that's white and covering hmm, orphan trains, and he won't even say out of his goddamn mouth white slavery. You have to read between the lines. You, know, you have to just read the fucking words on screen. So he knew this the whole time and he don't present it until so forth in the video. No, I sit there and say, how's John Levi making these videos saying that they're Tartarian? structures when these children from Tartaria was was what brought here how did their family give them up by force by desire undesirable children that's what they said it was we know they lie about everything so these probably wasn't undesirable children they probably snatched from their shit when we watch that boat leaving the fucking dock these are orphans. There should be like what the the the, the, the dude from the hospital, the, right? Wh whoever's in charge of the hospital should be there. See your asses later, right? Tired of them. He was, they just filled up his hospitals. 
He should be the only person after that. Him and the damn bus drivers. No, you see those children's families on the dock waving to them. Bye, son. So you don't have a child. And you don't thought it's okay to put your child on his damn voyage and send his ass off to an unknown land. And they say they're sitting there telling us to immigration and what they offered to people. To what? They offered to people to get on fucking boats to come to America to be imported slaves? <laughs> this isn't making sense, is it? Uh, no. Convicts, criminals, hmm? non Catholics, non taxpayers. Well, add anything? All right, I'm gonna go back to five minutes and uh, pick up from there again. Uh, I really want people to see how all these people work together. You know, um, the idea that the rest of them didn't seize this and stuff is just don't make any sense. Is, you know, um, fair use. You, know, you see some of them in videos together, and they'll 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 play this role like, oh wow, it's great to meet you. Uh, they, 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 they know what equipment to use, all kinds of shit. Uh, they ain't, they ain't, they ain't, in a they ain't no fucking strangers to each other. ...and sanitation centers. Hence, why we have so many of the large asylums being created in the early to mid-1800s. Think of the saying, seeking asylum. It wasn't just African Americans who faced now, these hardships. Remember that football shit that happened? Right, this is the, 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 you put somebody in the asylum, that, what are they called? The person that's in the asylum. Right, this is, this is the inmates taking over Arkham. That's what this is. These are not, who in the hell goes out of the way to build, right, an insane asylum is crazy people inside. You give them some drugs, they think they in a field of grass. They think they on cloud nine. This one thinks he's in outer space. This one thinks he's in the sewers. Why would you need such an elaborate building for now? You can see these are castles or some kind of town hall or something. Or I, I presume they're castles because of the number of bedrooms that are in there because again if you have a castle that means you're self-sufficient you're not going to go and trade with people people are going to come trade with you that means you got all types of berries that means you got all types of vegetables you don't have the time to do other shit and then be the gardener so that means you go have a gardener your gardener might have a family so that means you will have some of those rooms for the garter and the family. Now, on top of that, you might have a security force because the gardener produces goods and you have so much that it's more than you need for the season, so you do some sales. So you don't want people coming around stealing shit. If you're doing this much advanced work with brick and with metal, then you're probably trying to do engines through steam and things like that. So then you will have like a work lab. And back then to get that stuff, you only you can only get it from, from Europe because that's where it was known to be made, right? So knowing that the Romans were over here, knowing that all these other people were over here and their relationship with Europe, uh, uh, period. It, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to depict how these things were built and what these things were built for. This Again, 
your idea and my idea of a plantation is the same as this giant castle on the screen without <laughs> what a plantation house. Everybody still will have to live inside that castle to take care of everything around there. You know, again, when you start, self-sufficient means more than food. You're going to have a place for animals. And then, again, if you have a place for animals and you have crops and things like that, then you need a separation from that or your animals will stop. And you're going to, you're going to have shepherds for the animals. How many people does it take to run a farm? And then you're going to have gardeners for the berries and shit. So, again, this is why a building like this has so many rooms not to lock people up. Anything you want to add? Joe? Fair ah. use. We also have countless indigenous people facing the same thing, <laughs> as well as anyone really perceived by the larger society to be different. We're told, according to the official 1840 census, which was the first to report individuals as, quote, insane, that large numbers of newly freed individuals in northern states, in some reports, upwards of 40 percent, were locked away in asylums and considered to be in. All right. So here you have 1840 census was the first that attempted to count Americans who were insane. And you see it says right here, the Northern Blacks. Now this is what they were doing with the black people in the North. <clears throat> so I would imagine this is what's going on. Some state law is being passed here and there saying slavery is ended in this state or slavery is ended in that state. Then you have, this opens up with vagrancies. All right, stop thinking that, you know, the black people were the slaves, you know, again, the white people, it already told you it was the slaves. All right, so it's telling you the controversy over statistics for mental illness among Northern Blacks. So imagine what happened when they freed the slaves in the North uh, individually by state. What do you have in 1898? You have a, a, a whole gang of white people, no matter where they're from, they come into North Carolina and they and they obliterate the government, they throw a coup. So again, it's pretty obvious this is happening everywhere. What what are they doing in 1850 when they send new people that just arrived, they send them across the Mississippi with, with, with the Buffalo soldiers? That's a breaking of any, any contract or any government that exists out West that's to go fight to, to go fight them. So again, they're labeling people and mislabeling people. And it says in 1840 census, it was the first that he attempted to count Americans who were insane. Your slaves ain't American. You don't sit there and say to a slave, he's an American. When he is freed, he then what, what, becomes non-property then he gets his status and he's an American so again they're taking American citizens who are blacks in the north and they're putting them in insane asylums or calling them idiotic All right and again that's no different than you see people right getting suicided up in Canada with uh, you, you you're able to it, it's just like that you no, no, no I, I'm just gonna leave it at that because you know this this is this is starting to make sense there's a new control that's going around by force and now this is when right the controversy this is when they're forcing legislation and again this is well, this will be done state by state. Now, that means somebody went through the states in the north that were freed and started demanding that this be incorporated. And this is how you got all the black people out of important positions. 
Anything you want to add? No, no, no. One second. Fair use. Same. This becomes even more alarming when the results are compared with the census numbers for enslaved individuals in the South, where the number of individuals marked as, quote, insane was nowhere near as high. Here. Politics. Right there is here. Published results of the census indicate that alarming numbers of black persons living in non-slaveholding states were mentally ill. Now, again, I would understand if the water was poisoned, but they're getting their water from rivers. So unless every river was poisoned and everybody that drank from the river with dark skin was crazy, or the people that were just freed are finding a way to enslave the black people and they found a loophole through law through idiotic or mental illness. Now, I'm pretty sure most of the viewers that are hip to it will, will see how eugenics fits in. <laughs> what do they say about eugenics, right? Well, their goal is to rid the earth of people that are insane, idiotic, or uh, they, they birthed a lot of babies without the ability to feed them all. So, if they take your land from you and all that shit, you know, you got no way to feel it. <laughs> you got enough, got enough hands to, to, to do, right? Here we go. Aside, we can see how even when the freed men were freed, they never really achieved their freedom from the tyrants and often faced even more hardships. Now you see this? Here, here we go. Alarming numbers of black persons living in non-slaveholding non states were mentally ill in striking contrast to the corresponding figures for slaveholding states. What does that mean? Something not adding up. You know, this says the numbers are adding up. It's saying the black people that went into insane no, I'm saying, right. I'll be saying that. Uh, oh, yeah, I was making a pun. Okay, okay. Make a joke about it because it is adding up. This is what it's saying. The number of black people in insane asylums in non-slaveholding non states is corresponding. The same figures for slaveholding states. So the white people in the north was locking up the black people, and guess guess what was happening in the south? In the south, the black people had the white people enslaved. So the people in the north was controlled by white at that point, and so they were punishing those people for what? For making the deal with their rock that sold them. See, they can't reach their rock. They can't punish their rock. Remember, happened in eighties, right? It was we're going to go to war with Russia, right? The Cold War. That's their rock, right? Joe, show me. You should look at Zelensky, the Green Party. What green meaning is? Go ahead, Joe. You remember that? Yeah. The party of the people. So that led to Ezekiel 38, the princes, and who is the chief prince? Fair use. The tragedy becomes the children of these individuals. And this is where our story really begins to come full circle. Before 1853, there was essentially no place for the children of the insane to be housed. Many times. Yeah, this is what, 1853, this is the close of the insane asylum. Prison close. Now do you see why police officers, a great percentage of them are white and they're looking for black people to lock up and it's the same game. 
Now, if they put you behind bars on the uh, 14th Amendment, you're now the slave because your rights are taken away. Fair uh -huh. use. According to this narrative, these children would have to commit crimes just to get locked up and be taken off of the streets. So no, this is, excuse me, I didn't sync that up right. These children, right, he's still showing you this is the outcome of what they're doing to black people. To get them out of control of their ownership of land, they were putting their parents away. So then what happened with the children if the parents is locked up? in the same asylums, then the truth, this is what it's about. See, I tell you, some of these people that get gunned down, it don't seem like they're getting gunned down because they did something, right? They, oh, he was randomly shot. Oh, he seemed like his name is important. He's probably the land holder. And they have found some reason every generation to keep the rights out of the hand of the male. They couldn't set them up with this. They couldn't set them up, especially down in Louisiana. They won't even give the land rights back to them. They say, "You, y'all, y'all, right? It's just a parish. The, 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 right? You can't have trusts, Hey, right? See, this is all. <laughs> yeah, on the French Civil Code. Huh? A little louder. The French Civil Code. The Napoleon shit. So, yeah, this, this is this is bigger than than all of us, <laughs> all right? You see, again, just like all these uh, caucus people is, is formed this secret union that they call the Tartaria videos. The uh, the melanated people should have this damn union where they discover how, or discuss, or find how they 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 they, they took your 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 land rights from you, your agricultural rights. Many times, according to this narrative, these children would have to commit crimes just to get locked up and be taken off of the streets. So what he's doing here is he's now combining, I would presume, because again, he's the one that's choosing to show you the, the image of melanated children working in fields as chain gang, okay? He's the one that switches the narrative and starts talking about the children that saw that even though this was happening to those children, other children saw that as beneficial, so they tried to get thrown in jail for, for three square meals. Hmm? I was watching some shit one day, and I, I and 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 I saw the white dude. He took a brick. He threw it through the through the window at the uh, at the the car dealership. They said, "Why did you do it?" He said, "You get three square meals." Fair ah. use. Right? Again, man. Anybody homeless with any sense is going to do one of two things. They can get themselves some 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 shit and go into the forest and hunt for food. Or get them a pole and fish. So they're going to pick up a rock and damage some property and get thrown in prison. Any family deemed unsuitable, we're told, could be subject to the cruelty of America and could be labeled unfit and committed to an asylum. No. What Every time they show you pictures of black people, even though they look poor, everything is neat and clean. Here you can see what the slave house is. It's a shack with tin on the top. You see the clothes outside hung up in laundry. You see the dirt patches on the ground. They, they don't show you these type of pictures when they're trying to sell you black slaves. This is the real deal. The same thing is so you just look at the image. The image says more than a thousand words. The image says, damn, we've been lied to. 
America didn't have in place from the earliest days of the 1800s until 1853 was a place for these newly orphaned children to go. We're told these children would often create tribes or gangs, usually an intermingling of all races and religions, who would walk the streets looking for food and handouts. Have you ever seen the film Gangs of New York? This is the way that these children orphan gangs are often depicted. Yeah, I saw the gangs in New York, and when it, when 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 all hell broke loose, they the only thing they could do is turn to each other and they said, "Let's go get those black people." That's that's what they said, and that's what they did. Now, as we continue, we're gonna we're gonna hear the same story about let's go get those black people, and it's gonna be the story of Central Park. And now we will find out why they went after the black people. New York is also key in this narrative. I'm going to try to keep this as brief as possible, but here are some facts to know before we dive in. Freemasonry is banned by the Catholic Church. Fair use. So Freemasonry is banned by the Catholic Church. Okay. Masonry arises from Rosicrucianism, which essentially postulates that the world is built on a secret esoteric order. All right. I'm bad. Let me catch up to this shit. Which can be determined in part using factors such as geometry and gematria, which are also used in most Masonic construction. Okay, so, fucking, what do you say? We already know the answer to this. We dive in. Freemasonry is banned by the Catholic Church. Freemasonry arises from Rosicrucianism, which essentially postulates that the world is built on a secret esoteric order, which can be determined in part using factors such as geometry and gematria, which are also used in most Masonic construction. Okay, so they're looking for, uh, they discuss this is the center of the earth, the plasma released from the electromagnetism that creates the plasma uh, that we see called the sun, sunrise and all that shit. And right, this is why they do that damn fake star of David as they want to call it. It's really a star rem fan. Right. They say the energy of one triangle field is coming down. The point is up in the air. It's coming down, and the energy of the other triangle field is coming up from the hole. So that's this is really the secret that he's actually doing, or that he's reading about. We'll say that's what it is. All right, and then you know, of course, they're like, how do we utilize? It? They call it the, the, the aurora borealis, right? The green, right? image that you see and that's how they know this is that's the moment right and the most high says that's the image radiating off of his throne right so we have a contrast of uh uh desire <laughs> going on with with the rose christians right the christians that rose up fair use over the catholic again man it's just this is, if you look at these names like a child it ain't no mystery it's the Christians that rose up over the Catholic through Freemasonry, right? And, and, and again, Catholic rule by might, and these people are trying to rule by science. See, science. That's, reason, that's probably the reason why they got the double cross. A little louder. I said that's probably the reason why they got the double cross. Mm, see? And this all will make sense pretty soon. When, when you say Farmica is a science, when you say knowing that the human body is a science, now they're saying, well, let's use chemicals to turn off this system. Yes, let's use chemicals to turn off that system. And for a price, they can reproduce again. Right? And we'll throw in kicks and bonuses. Right? And for the right amount of money, we'll throw in some wings and a tail, a couple horns. Now you have your desired child, emperor. I mean, child. Fair use. New York, once home to a vast array of indigenous tribes and indigenous cities, with the Palisades even being discussed as a possible site for the ancient hidden city of Norumbega, by the early 1800s, New York was becoming abundantly more Catholic. A neighborhood of freed men, mostly African American, 
lived in New York City in what is today Central Park. Their rich and vastly built out neighborhood was called Seneca Village. Now, we've already discussed the large numbers of free people that were being committed in the mid 1800s. We can see, in New York especially, that this is a practice done quite often and without warrant. While the vast landscapes of Seneca Village often operated outside the scope of most European New Yorkers' lives, the freedom of Seneca Village was first encroached upon when in 1837, construction began on the Croton Distributing Reservoir, also known as the Murray Hill Reservoir. This is an absolutely epic structure. The entire Croton Aqueduct of New York is absolutely breathtaking, <laughs> and some of the images really left me without words. To imagine, the scope of engineering and manpower that this would have required is without question. You know what trips me out the most about this is you see pictures of black people. No. Hold on, I got to freeze. <laughs> okay, we're going again. Yeah, you see pictures of black, you say no. <laughs> you see pictures of black people all throughout history, but, but suddenly when you get to the things that they created, there is no picture of them in a suit and a tie and all that stuff, right? They, they just want to show you pictures of, oh, they're captive or they're slaves or something. So after slavery in New York State was uh, uh, some Seneca Village. I missed what that was said. All right, I guess we should just go to Seneca Village if we really want to read it. Anyway, Seneca Village after slavery in New York was outlawed in 1827. So slavery in New York was outlawed in 1827. That's what that's saying. And in the 1830s, people from York Hill were forced to move so that the reservoir uh, basin for the ba uh, for the reservoir could be built. All right. So many residents, many of the York Hill residents migrated to Seneca Village. OK, so. Did you already say that the, the Seneca Village was 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 where black people was living? Yeah. OK, so you already stated. OK, so again, that's going to mean that all over Central Park was black people. Right. Even when we see they're going force to move. Right. So what do they do in the city when they want some property and, and, and they force people to move? Right. This is the start of that. I forgot what that's called. Uh, gentrification. Huh? Gentrification. No, I mean. Public domain. Like they're gonna take property for public domain, All right? And so, uh, so this is the they they move these people. They move some people that lived in the park, and those people just moved from their residence in the park further into the park. <laughs> Raise a toast to that Ritz cracker. Oh, that's great. You gotta pay, you gotta pay your bills, dude. I'm getting a bunch of freezes. All right. All right. Fair ah. use. We're back. The reservoir covered over four acres and held over 20 million gallons of water, supplying the entire city of New York with drinking water for the better part of the second half of the 19th century. It was built in the Egyptian revival style with 50 foot high walls that were over 25 feet thick. Wonder how they knew how to build that.
All the homes you see in the distance are where the black people live. The Croton Reservoir was demolished in 1899. However, the residue of the infrastructure can still be found in Central Park if you know where to look. Central Park. How can we tie that into this narrative? Well, if you've been paying attention. So here you see, you know, there's no black people in these photos, but yet you see shacks in the background. But yet, you already know, you see these buildings, these brick buildings all around, you know. So you can all argue if these are work shacks versus if these are actually people's homes right here. But, you know. We can tie it in quite well. One of the main operations which profited the free men of Seneca Village, allowing them to construct large masonry homes, was the Seneca Village Bone Factories. And see, this is another part of the deceit because we've already seen that these are black people living here. He's already expressed that. But now when he shows us images, he's showing us images of white people there uh, working. All right, so there is a deception that's going on, right? What is a bone factory, you might ask? Well, I was surprised to hear that animal carcasses were processed through bone factories, essentially breaking down the bones into fat, which was used to make soap and candles and into bone dust, which was a key component in the processing of refined sugar. Apparently, processed sugar has basically the same color as Coca-Cola, a dark brown to black. Bone dust, however, will pull the dark color from the sugar, providing the white color of refined sugar that we are so familiar with today. This becomes interesting in modern times as the argument arises, does this mean that all processed sugar is not vegan? But I digress. Imagine now, the smartphone in your pocket. Who else do you know with a smartphone? Basically everyone. It is the popular item of right now, a way of life. Now imagine sugar in the 1800s. Imagine refined sugar. It became the new craze. It literally changed the way America and the rest of the world functioned. Everyone wanted sugar and they paid higher prices for processed white sugar. In New York, in the early 1800s, this was only made possible by the factories of Seneca Village, which were run by the freed men. At the same time that Seneca Village was thriving, two men of European ancestry would be attended. You already know the freed men is the Freedmen's Bureau. The Freedmen's Bureau deals with black people or melanated people or however you want to view it. Again, he keeps showing you white people, but he's talking about black people. Yale University, home to a slew of early American secret societies, Freemason societies, including Skull and Crossbones. These two men would go on to not only become best friends at Yale, but they would also seemingly decide the fate of New York through architecture, religion, and the fate of the freed and poor people. These men were Frederick Law Olmsted and Charles Loring Brace. Frederick Law Olmsted was an outspoken social critic and one of the most famous landscape architects of his time. He left Yale before graduating. His claim to fame initially was a journalistic report on the South.